this right here is my list my tier list of all of the wow villains number one you have a villain that would be forgettable except for the fact that he drops a mount this is alec here the uh commander of the wind now i didn't even really know why alec here was against us i had no idea why i still don't really fucking know why maybe because like him and uh ragnaros was boys and like ragnaros was like deathwing is actually the he's the real deal you know and so you said all right fine fuck yeah the boss fight was fucking badass like the alec here boss fight was badass but the lore behind him was garbage so we're gonna put alec here as a b all right so we've got the next one uh we've got ursula uh fucking lady ashvane She's a, a, a very, uh, very beautiful woman, uh, of course, very healthy. Doesn't matter, uh, you know, if she turns into a fish or not, or, or how, how big she is or anything like that. Here's the fact with her is that I don't like her. I don't know. I just, I never liked her as a character. I really can't explain why. Maybe, yeah, it's fat phobia. Maybe that's what it is. But the thing is, like, some of the other cult here that are female are, are actually thick. Like, they're hot. But, like, this one, not not so much. This was the worst part of the cult here storyline was her. And uh, we're going to go on to number, uh, number three here, which is actually not only, see, not only is Ashara a good villain, like, you know it, I know it, everybody knows it. But she also turned her into something somehow even uglier than what she was in the first place. Ashara is a great villain. She's fucking hot. She basically made a pact with a, an old god. And she's, like, so arrogant that she thought that she could, you know, fucking d pull one over on an old god. This is an easy S-plus villain. Ashara is an amazing villain. She's, like, basically, in a lot of ways like a female Denathrius. And also the boss fight was pretty cool, except for on Mythic because you had to actually take a college level PhD class to be able to figure out how the fuck to do it. But besides that, it was definitely an S tier boss. You know it, I know it, everybody knows it. So next boss right here, yeah, this is Thessarian. This is the last boss inside of, uh, he's got Iron Foe right there. That's the mace that never drops. I never really got that excited about the Dark Iron Dwarves. A lot of people like it, like he's cool. Uh, he obviously like kidnapped or convinced the dwarven pr uh, princess to go with them and I would say like this is probably a B tier villain uh, he fucked Magni's daughter yeah yeah I mean that's that's kind of low man that's some fucked up shit so we're gonna put him down here we're gonna give him a B now the next thing we got to look at here this is another villain uh, it's Jihoon now this is the Kmart version of an old god you know you go to the flea market and you see, uh, you want to buy a, an action figure of Thor. And it's obviously a G.I. Joe that just got painted with, like, a watercolor. And it's got some red on it instead of the uh, instead of the green. Well, this is basically Gahoon. Uh, I feel like Gahoon is a stupid fucking idea. Like, number one, it's a dumb fucking idea. That, like, oh, they made their own old god to experiment on it. Like, get the fuck out of here. But they couldn't control it. Like, shut the fuck up. That's the dumbest idea I've ever heard. Because the only reason, like, the Titans could have just gotten rid of them. The only reason that Amon Thule didn't get rid of all the other Titans the same... Like, you know what he did with Yasarsh, right? The fucking Titan that, uh... Or the old god that, like, uh... uh fucking Garrosh ate his heart he just he went in there he plucked that bitch out of azeroth and he threw him in the garbage and it, that that's the way that's the way he deals with an old god as he ripped that bitch right the fuck out gahoon is not only uh, i thought was a dumb boss he looks cool like that's one thing i can give him he looks cool the fight for gahoon was fucking annoying like people quit raiding not because it was too hard but because it was too hard to make yourself care fuck that boss and he didn't even drop any good loot he dropped the same shit that everybody else did like you spend fucking 18 minutes going through some synchronized swimming location and you know not location rotation and what do you get out of it a fucking 385 piece of shit that you don't need gahoon gets a c there are some D, there are some D villains, right? This is a double D villain, but there are some like massive fucking D villains and I'm not going to give him a D. So let's go to the next one. The next one right here is Malganus. Now, in my opinion, Malganus is fucking awesome. 
Malganus is probably one of the more interesting Dreadlords. I'm going to say Mal... I think Malganus is an A-tier villain, right? Like, does he really hit that S-tier? I don't think that he hits the S-tier, but he is easily, fucking easily an A-tier villain. You know it, I know it, everybody knows it, right? Arthas is nemesis. Arthas chased this motherfucker all the way to Northrend to kill him and he did he arthas did kill his ass so yeah i would say that what ray was he in uh he was in a five-man dungeon in uh caverns of time he's a legendary villain yeah he's legendary now the next one here is uh xavius now xavius i always thought was a cool villain he bitch made malfury in number one but then you go and you see xavius at the end of the um where is it look at it he ain't got no legs look at it he he doesn't have any legs like, what the fuck is this, man? I felt like the idea of the Emerald Nightmare, it just didn't really hit. It was such a cool idea. It just, it wasn't, it wasn't there. I would put Xavius as like down here as a B tier villain. It was not amazing. It was not crazy. He's definitely better than Alec here. I'll tell you that for sure. But he's not an A tier villain and he's certainly fucking not an S tier villain. Okay, let's be honest. Now, the next one here is Cthoon. Now, Cthoon is, in my opinion, the old gods are great fucking villains. I love the old gods as villains. I feel like Cthoon is probably the best one. I, I like Cthoon as a villain the most. And the reason why I like Cthoon the villain is the most is because he's not, like, he's not crazy. Like, the way that, like, you know, like the fucking, you will die. Like, that shit, your heart will explode. Like, it just... And especially, like, back then, whenever the game came out, like, nobody was used to that kind of shit, right? It was like, what the fuck? Like, this never happened. And I really think that it was cool. And Cthune, I would say, is an A-tier villain. I don't think that he is an S-tier villain. I don't think so at all. But I would say, easily, he is an A-tier villain. And it was the first old god fight as well. So there's this, uh, this, this guy next. Lord Stormsong. So, here's the problem with me being able to rate Lord Stormsong. It would have required me to have read the quests. Everybody says D? Sounds good to me. Let's put him in D. Okay, uh, next. What do we got here? We have Kel'Thuzad. Now, Kel'Thuzad is... <sighs> I feel like Kel'Thuzad is a... He's a great villain. And Kel'Thuzad is at the point now where they brought him back for Shadowlands. And you guys got to understand, like, Kel'Thuzad, they brought this dude back three times because he used to be a human. He was in the Kirin Tor, and then he decided to say, never mind, I'm going to be a necromancer. He died. So that's number one. He died there. And then they brought him back. He's a lich. And then he's a lich in Nax 40, and we kill him there. And guess what? We didn't destroy the phylactery. So guess who comes back at level 80? It's the fucking Lich again, Kel'Thuzad. And then finally, we kill him at level 80, we destroy the Phylachery, we make it down to the Shadowlands, and guess who is in the Shadowlands? It's Kel'Thuzad. Like, it, you just can't get rid of this guy. He's like a, he's a cockroach of the Warcraft Lord. You can't stop him. You can't get rid of him, doesn't matter what you do. It's like Voldemort. Yeah, exactly. He's got a million Horcruxes. It's like at this point, if Kel'Thuzad comes back in the next expansion, no one's going to care. Like, everybody's just going to think it's funny. It's like Blizzard thinks up some fucking convoluted, like he had a backup phylachery that was back in Azeroth and like uh, his soul went back to Azeroth. Like, yeah, whatever, right? Like, nobody would even give a shit if they brought back Kel'Thuzad again. And they probably will just for the memes. Yeah, Kel'Thuzad's an S-tier villain, right? He's a bottom tier S-tier villain, but he is an S tier villain because of how ridiculous he is. Mr. Bigglesworth, too. He's got a soft side. True. All right, next guy. Blackhand. Now, Blackhand, in my opinion, uh, is fucking awesome. I, I love Blackhand. I don't think he's an S. I actually don't think he's an S. Like, he's not very complex. He's just a big, badass motherfucking orc. He's just a fucking badass orc. Like, that's it. It's not that, like, you have to be some kind of super powerful being. 
to be an S, just badass, no need for conviction. You're right. And that's what makes him a great A-tier villain. I think Blackhand would go right. Maybe, probably, I don't think, he's not better than Cthulhu. I would put Blackhand as an A. Blackhand is an easy fucking A villain. Now, let's go ahead. We're going to look at the next one. Yeah, and also the fight for Blackhand. Like, the fight for Blackhand was so fucking good, man. It was amazing. So, next thing we have is Edwin Van Cleef. Edwin Van Cleef is one of the only characters in the World of Warcraft lore that there is actually any ambiguity as to whether he's really wrong or not. And the fact is, that, like, he's introduced so early in the game and there's a lot of reasons why like you know maybe he wasn't totally wrong about everything and i think that having a character like that is really fucking good van cleef is not a villain and that's why he's an s tier villain that's the whole exact fucking reason obviously he he's an s tier villain like this is a great because there are a lot of ways you can get to being an s tier villain right you can be the joker you can be dio you can be thanos uh you can be Sauron, right? All of these are completely different fucking characters with completely different motivations and completely different personalities and just the way they act is totally different, right? And all of those can get you to S tier if it's good enough. So Van Cleef is definitely S tier even though he's totally different than Ashara. Yeah, Van Cleef is over Cthune? Yeah, because Cthune is a one-dimensional character. He's really cool. He's super interesting because he's an old god and everything like that. But you don't sit around and think about Cthune like, oh man, like this is an interesting character. It's not an interesting character. It's just it's just an old god. Next one here. Illidan. Now, Illidan as a villain. Well, we know he wasn't actually a villain, so it's the same thing. Illidan was obviously S tier. Like, you guys have no idea what it was like back in Vanilla WoW, back in the days whenever Illidan showed up on the fucking screen because everybody knew, everybody fucking knew that we had to go to Outland. They knew that shit was coming because it was wrapping up everything that happened in Warcraft 3. And who was the main guy who was in charge of Outland? Fucking Illidan. And so the moment that he hit that screen, everybody went fucking wild. Obviously, Illidan is an S-tier villain. Uh, I think that Illidan is as good as Ashara. Like, Illidan probably is better than Ashara, but maybe not. It, it, it depends on what you like. Illidan is definitely, like, he has, like, the iconic voice lines. The fight is awesome. He's a complex character. He ends up being on our side later on. Like, Illidan is fucking badass. Illidan is uh, amazing. Uh, I love Illidan. All right, speaking of, uh, let, let's let's t let's change things around here. We got Cargath Bladefist. Now, yes, yeah, somehow, Cargath Bladefist, who, uh, got fucked over by orcs, or sorry, by ogres his whole time, uh, at some point in the story, decided to be a gladiator for them. How the fuck did that happen? I don't know. But it sure didn't make a lot of sense to me. Cargath was a shitty fucking fight, and it was one of the most badass, iconic, original horde leaders. They put him in the first boss of Highmall? Are you fucking kidding me? The disrespect. The disrespect of that. He, it, that's a, this is a D. And he's he's gonna be below all these other shit bosses because at least you didn't you didn't get let down with Lady Ashvane. You were just happy that she was off the screen. With Cargath, you were hoping that something good was gonna happen, and something bad did happen instead. Medivh as a villain. I don't really think that Medivh really is a villain. We've never fought Medivh. I would not really even say Medivh is a villain at all. I I, I don't think he's a villain. Like, he got possessed by Sargeras. Like, I mean, that's like, where do you even put that? Like, I'll put that as a C. I feel like that's a C-level story. Like, who gives a shit? All right, and speaking of getting fucking emceed by Sargeras, we have the big dick himself, Sargeras. Now, Sargeras is uh, basically, uh, you know, Morgoth of Azeroth. He is the main evil. It's his burning, bur the burning crusade. That was his idea. Okay, so Sargeras, uh, the mad titan, crazy, corrupted, evil. Sargeras is fucking amazing. Uh, and yeah, he's not evil. They, they changed that, right? Because he originally was evil. He's not necessarily evil. He is just destroying all the planets because he's a, uh, you know, he doesn't want to have the Void Wards basically uh, uh, possess a, a titan soul. I think Sargeras is an S-tier villain. 
I think that he is either above or below Ashara, but I think that he is below Illidan because there just hasn't been enough personification to really put Sargeras above Ashara. Like, or sorry, above Illidan. Like, there's no, no shot. Like, maybe in the future, but not now. All right, next thing, Sylvanas. Now, the thing is that by the time that Sylvanas actually became a villain, she was D tier. Whenever she was a, uh, you know, a more interesting character, she was an S tier. Sylvanas was one of the best characters in the story. There's a reason all of these girls on Twitter fucking, uh, you know, have quotes from Sylvanas in their care in their their fucking Twitter bios, right? And they're simping for her even though she's obviously fucking wrong. The fact is that Sylvanas used to be really, really cool, but now Sylvanas is the worst villain that we've ever fucking had. Sylvanas is terrible. It is the worst thing that we have ever fucking had. So yeah, we've got Putris next. Now Putris, if you guys don't know, was the guy that bombed. Like, no, it, it's a joke, man. It's a joke, right where she belongs. It's a joke. Because again, like it was worse than Kargath. Like we had some expectations for Kargath, but for Sylvanas, we had 15 years of expectations. So Putris, I always thought was kind of weird because like whenever I originally saw this, I thought that Putris was like, he was the guy in charge uh, of the revolt. But then I heard that like Sylvanas, like it was some kind of fucking inside job. I felt like I was watching an Alex Jones video and it just confused the shit out of me. It was a retcon. Yeah, that shit was fucking stupid. So I'm going to put Putris, like, honestly, Putris doesn't really seem like it's that exciting uh, if he just gets retconned and it was actually Sylvanas, Sylvanas' idea all along. So the next villain, the next one, obviously, is actually, uh, the, 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 like, I don't know where to put Garrosh because how can the one true war chief of the Horde be a villain? The greatest war chief the Horde has ever had. How could he possibly be a villain? It doesn't make any sense. Like, how does that make... Uh, what the fuck, right? Garrosh, unironically, did nothing wrong uh, until he got until he ate he, he ate the heart of Yasaraj, the old god, and then it, it fucking possessed him. So it's like that's the same as I said with Arthas. Arthas and Garrosh did nothing wrong. Garrosh is, in my opinion, I like Garrosh more than Illidan personally. Uh, I think Garrosh is way more interesting than Illidan because the story of Garrosh is way more interesting because it actually, the way that he is perceived in the story changes throughout the, the political developments of the story of the game. Because if you had Garrosh in Warcraft 2, Garrosh would be the greatest war chief the Horde has ever had. And I think that's the most interesting thing, right? He is a man born in the wrong century. And I thought that was cool. And he's also one of the... He's an original character. He's not from Warcraft 3 or some fucking bullshit. He was a completely original character. And also, like, you know, he was so sad. He thought he was a loser in Burning Crusade because he thought Grom, you know, was a piece of shit. And then he turns out that Grom fucking saved the Horde. And then, you know, then he becomes a war chief. Yeah, he was awesome, man. So, yeah, Garrosh, one of my favorites. Now, White Mane. I feel like this is, uh, this is, again, this is going to be going into the double D tier. Like, I, I, I don't, like, where do you put some, where do you put White Mane? Like, I, I feel like it's just, it's such a, like, it's not that exciting of a character. Well, it is, but the story isn't exciting. And so, like, what the fuck is the point? You know what I mean? Like, like, I, I feel like the, the whole idea of the Scarlet Crusade and everything, I think that's kind of cool, but, it, I mean, she's just really a, a religious zealot. Like, how high can you rate a religious zealot? I, I feel like we'll put her probably, we'll put her below, uh, right here. I think, I think right here is fair. Uh, she's B tier. Yeah, but she's hot. I know that, but that's not what we're rating them as, okay? I've done a waifu tier list in WoW before. I'm sure I'll do another one. All right, next one is, is uh, Yog saran now, I love Yog saran because he's fucking insane. Yog saran is absolutely fucking insane. He is crazy. He's a wild animal. He's an asshole. He's corrupting everybody. He's ruining everything. And he doesn't care. He thinks that shit is funny, man. And so, like, Yog saran like, which is the better old god? Yog saran or Cthune? It's hard to say. I kind of like the personality. The personality of Cthune is is a lot more uh, menacing in a way, but Yog saran is just a wild fucking animal. And I would say Yog saran is above Cthu it's above Cthune. 
explains a lot of politics when Garrosh is being rated that high. Well, not really, because Garrosh isn't real. I don't know if you know that. He's not real. Yeah, so like whenever he drops a bomb somewhere, like nobody actually dies. Yeah, no one dies. It, it actually, it's not that big of a deal. So just keep that in mind. Let's go to the next one. Nefarian. What the fuck? Who the fuck cares about Nefarian? Like, I would say Nefarian is like, he's like, he's like right here. I would say like, maybe he's right here. You know what? Nefarian, he's so iconic. We're going to, we're going to put him at the bottom of the, we're going to put him at the bottom of the A tier. Okay. Because Nefarian did have a role in classic and he was like involved in multiple things. And he was like masterminding shit. And like, that was cool. Like for sure. He was cool. And also, he had a cool fight. Like, he did. It, the, the Nefarian fight was badass. And yeah, he had some really good loot, too. You're right about that. Absolutely. So, he controls all Blackrock, man? Yeah, of course he does. Uh, absolutely. Nefarian Part 2 had that funny Raiders quote. Well, there's a lot of things that Nefarian had that were cool. And all I'm really trying to get at is that Nefarian, now that I think about it, was like kind of a little bit more of a complex character, but not that much more, okay? Wasn't he part of the whole kidnap dragon eggs? I think so, but I'm not sure. Now we have Malagos. In my opinion, Malagos is a, uh, it's a very boring character. Malagos, like, why, why are y'all saying A? Like, why should Malagos be an A-tier fucking boss? Like, everything bad that happened with Malagos happened off-screen. He's not better than Nefarian, even slightly. If you read books, he's great. Well, what happens if you don't? If you don't, you put him as a fucking C. I read the, I read the Day of the Dragon book, okay? Uh, I was really excited whenever, uh, yeah, he's above, Gah he's worse than Gahoon. No, he's not, a, he's not worse than Gahoon, okay? Like, don't say that. Fights four bloke, that was the coolest thing that happened in WoW up to that point. Are you fucking kidding me, man? Like, you really think that was the coolest thing that ever happened in WoW? What about whenever Kill Jaden came out of the fucking, uh, the, the Sunwell, man? But like, he says, surprise, bitch, it's me, I'm here. Like, that's not even remotely close. And then also, uh, that dragon got turned into Felmus. That shit was badass, too. And then also Illidan. Like, remember Illidan? That shit was cool. And then what about whenever Kael'thas rose up into the air and shattered the fucking windows and then threw everybody up in the air, turned off gravity? Like, you're really gonna tell me that Malagos... Like, it, Malagos was cool. Like, don't get me wrong. It was fucking cool. But there were a lot of other cool things in the game, too. All right? You remember? I remember. Yeah, I remember. I remember that. You remember that? Oh, oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Malgo's lame fight. Yeah, I thought it was okay. All right, let's look at this one here. So we got this guy right here, Zul'jin. Zul'jin's a great fight. Zul'jin is the example of a character that, um, yeah, I think he's, he's a great character. Like, he got his arm cut off. Zul'jin basically is a character that loses every single thing. Like, there has never been a time that Zul'jin won. Like, all Zul'jin does is lose. He lost his fucking arm, he lost his eye, he lost his bear mounts, and then he lost his instance, only to get brought back to lose another fucking bear mount. And he also lost his original loot, which Blizzard GMs won't fucking restore. I'm gonna give Zul'jin an A tier boss level. Actually, I think B, uh, it's like either low B, or sorry, high B or low A. It's one or the other. Uh, actually, it wasn't him in the remake. Oh, yeah, you're right about that. Yeah, it was that other asshole. Yeah, never mind. Yeah, I say low A, high B. Like, somewhere around there. That's what I think is fair. Let's go to the next one. Who the fuck is this? The five-man boss? Who gives a shit? Gorak Tol? Yeah, that's that's him. He's the last boss in Waycrest Manor. He was cool in a way, but, like, why have we not... Like, I thought... See, this is, like, this is what I was expecting in Shadowlands. I actually thought that we were gonna go to their fucking homeland in the patch before Xerath Mortis. Like, the patch before we we would go to the- there would be, like, patch 9.2, the Blighted Lands, patch 9.3, Warcraft in-game. And we kill, uh, we kill, uh, uh fucking, uh, the Jailer. So, like, I was disappointed. So, like, in a way, I, I don't know if I really can- uh, I can be a fan of- that he was scrapped? Yeah, it's disappointing, because I thought the whole Thros and- and everything like that was cool. But it, it, it's just, it's just another piece of shit. It's just another piece of shit, man. That's all there is to it. Was never fleshed out as a character? No, it never was. Uh, the whole witch thing in Dressfar was cool. Yeah, he was cool. Like, I don't know. Maybe I'll put him, like, right here. Yeah, he doesn't deserve to be a D. Like, the Dressfar quest line was like, yeah, he's not a D. But he is a C. Missed opportunity tier. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, Archimond. You know what I think about Archimond? 
I think Archimond out of the three, uh, you know, you've got Valen, you've got fucking Kill Jaden, and you've got Archimond. Why does everybody rate Archimond so high? You don't even know anything about him. He's just an asshole. Like there's no there's no personality. It's like Kill Jaden is a thousand fucking times better than Archimond. Like he's a he's just a he's basically the bouncer of the Draenei. And then he he turned against the, the his boys. That's what it was, attacking the world tree though. Yeah. Like he's a trio. Nah, the thing is they're confusing him with KJ. Yeah, Kill Jaden is fucking awesome. Archimond is not. Archimond is like Archimond is like right. He's like right here, okay? I can't put him any lower because of so much nostalgia, right? I mean, we've had we've been killing Archimond ever since fucking bro. We've been killing Archimond. We've been killing Archimond ever since Warcraft 3. So we killed this guy so many times. So like I get like I can't put him any lower, but like Archimond is just such a he's such a boring character. He's a, lower than Zul'jin? Yeah, because at least there's some fucking intention with Zul'jin, some personality behind it, some, uh, y you know, like, what, what do you want to really call it? Uh, you know, motives? With Archimond, he's just gray and mad. That's it, he destroyed Dalaran, dude? Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, no, the thing is, like, he's cool, he's badass, but how far does badass get you? Because I think Blackhand is way cooler than Archimond. So he's definitely not there. Nefarian is definitely cooler than Archimond. Because you actually get to interface and talk to and interact with Nefarian. My Archimond is just a bad guy. That's it. He's just a big bad guy. Nefarian. Who the fuck is Nefarian? Cloud Strive 12? Well, guess what? Were you 12 fucking years old? You're asking who the fuck Nefarian is? Grow up. What's the next boss? Verimathris. Oh my god. Oh my god, this boss. Imagine this, okay? Imagine you're part of a 10,000 year plan. You get found out and you get used as a fucking BDSM sex toy for some weird women that have six arms. Well, actually, that doesn't sound that bad, to be honest. But like, what I'm like, I mean, he got, they fucked his shit up. Like, let's be honest, they completely fucked his shit up. So, I feel like Verimathris is, it's a C tier villain. It's a low, low, it's an L tier villain. Yeah, he's a walking L, yeah. After he had to serve Sylvanas for you. Yeah, this guy's a fucking, he's a, he's a professional simp, man. Exactly, think about it. Let's go look at the next one. Elisand. Elisand was awesome. I loved Elisand as a villain. Again, she had a lot of the, uh, she had a lot of the qualities that Ashara had. Now, she's not Ashara, right? Because she didn't have tentacles, let's be honest. But... She's still really, really fucking good. I would say that Elisand is... Mm, depends on where you... What your opinion is. But I think she's either below or above the old gods. I think it's either one or the other. That's what I think is fair. And the fight was really interesting. How you could go back in time. Like, the fight was fucking cool. If you heroic leap through the middle, you would fucking die. I remember that really clearly. One expansion boss, though. Just kind of thrown in there, though. But it wasn't really just thrown in there. Because, like, you had more lore about Elisand than you probably had about Malganus. Whenever you really think about it. There was so there was like more cinematics that she was in. There was more shit that happened to, to Archimon Blood Elison. Yes, bro. Absolutely. Now let's go ahead and look at the next one. Kazakh. What do you mean, Kazakh? What the fuck did he do? Like he just shows up, like says for the Burning Legion, and then he dies? Like, who cares? Yeah, he got he got soloed by one paladin. Well, we're just gonna we're gonna put him down in D. All right, he's not as bad as some of these, but we're gonna put him down there in D. All right, what's this here? Next one, stitches. Stitches. Who the fuck added stitches? What? All right, we're gonna put stitches as a. It's a low B because at least it was cool because you were helping the guy. What the fuck was his name? It's not Archimond. Abercrombie. The fucking uh, necromancer, and you were helping him the whole long, uh, whole time around, and then somehow this guy comes in. Yeah, he was scary in Duskwood. No, he wasn't. Just, just walk around him, man. You see him on the road. Get off the road. I've never been killed by stitches. You just walk around him. Uh, the next one, Kill Jaden. In my opinion, I think Kill Jaden is fucking awesome. I love Kill Jaden. I love the way he looks. I love his motivations. I love his relationship that he has with Valen. I love the last cinematic that he was in. 
Kill Jaden is fucking awesome. I feel like Kill Jaden is an S tier boss. He was so fucking badass. The fight was really fucking cool. He took you to Argus. Everything about it was cool. I loved Kill Jaden, man. I like his regret as well. Yeah, well, it wasn't really regret. I think it was relief at the very end because he thought that they would never beat Sargeras. And then Valen, like my, like in my head, like what happened was that Valen granted him a vision of the future that showed him that uh, Sargeras would lose. That's what I thought. That's what I thought would ha what it was. Now, I don't know that if that's true, but like that's my opinion. Uh, I would put him about actually right here. Yeah, I would put him about right here. Now let's go to the next one. Open image. Arugal. Arugal. Who gives a shit about Arugal? He's a boss in a 20, level 20 dungeon. So basically, Arugal summoned... Uh, the way the Worgen came into Azeroth is basically this guy was opening doors from other dimensions and somehow the Worgen just came through the door. So not only did this guy fucking uh, get a bunch of people killed, but he was the first fucking thing that introduced furries into this game. You're going to a D. This is a D, that's a D boss. Uh-uh. That is a D fucking boss. Enabling furries in my game. What's the next one? Baron Rivendare. Hmm. He's really cool. Baron Rivendare is really fucking cool. But there's not really much of a story to him at all. I feel like Baron Rivendare is about right here. Like, there's not much of a story at all that Baron Rivendare, he's just there, he's got a mount. If he didn't have a like, if, if Baron Rivendare did not drop a mount, who the fuck would give a shit? Nobody, nobody would care, dude. It wouldn't matter. So let's go to the next one. Now, this is one of my favorite fucking villains, man. I love Cho'Gall. I think Cho'Gall is fucking badass. And he's not that complex of a villain. He's really not. But I just think the two-headed ogre making a deal with the devil, like all that kind of crazy shit. I'm going to put Cho'Gall all the way up here. I love Cho'Gall. Cho'Gall and these nuts? That, no, bitch. Like, shut up. Like, he's such a good boss. Like, Cho'Gall was awesome. Why was he cool? Because he looks cool. And he was like an ogre mage. Like, I thought that... that here's the thing. Like, in Warcraft 2, ogres were on the Horde side. I thought that ogre mages were the coolest thing in the game. I, I thought they were just so fucking cool. Like, they were badass with the two heads that argue with each other and shit. I love that, man. Absolutely. Yeah, ogre's still not a race. Yeah, because they haven't been... Ba they haven't been... Uh, the ogres should be in the Horde. The Horde should get ogres. Absolutely. I thought they would release him as a playable race. I think they will soon. Yeah, uh, he was not an idiot like the other ogres. Yeah, exactly. Because, like, that's the thing. is like a lot of the other ogres were fucking... They basically... Uh, like, this... I'm not even kidding. Like, in the lore, all the smart ogres died, I'm pretty sure, in Highmall. So the only ogres that are left after Highmall were the dumb ones. Like that, that straight up, uh, yeah, he overthrew, yeah, he over, I forgot all about that. He overthrew the Emperor from, from Highmall, yeah. That was fucking badass. So yeah, I would definitely say that too. Yeah, Cho'Gall is an A-tier villain. I love Cho'Gall, all right? That's my point that I'm getting at. That's what I'm trying to say. We never went to the Ogre homeland. Stupid fucking Wad, man. Like, Wad could have been the best expansion we ever had, and instead it wasn't. So, Deathwing. Deathwing is the best force of nature boss with no motivation really whatsoever that we've ever had. He's just a pure force of nature. Like, he's possessed by Nazoth, yeah, but like, ah, who gives a fuck? The, the problem with, uh, with Deathwing is that what the fuck did Deathwing ever do? He's just a dragon that flew around. I feel like Deathwing is the same. Like, he's just... I would put Deathwing, like, right... Like, right here. I would not put... I would probably put him right here. Yeah, I think this is fair. Uh, Deathwing is just... There's not really much about him. There's no story. There's nothing about Deathwing at all. Like, it's just... He's just... He's, are you high? No, I read the book. I, I read the book. There's no story... No, but what I'm... Y'all are completely missing what I'm saying. I didn't say there's... All right. What I really mean to say 
is that in Cataclysm, all of the time that we are interacting with Deathwing, there is never any interfacing with Deathwing. You don't talk to him. You don't really say anything to him. You don't do anything. Like, I read the War of the Dragons book when I was 14 fucking years old, so I don't remember a lot of it, to be honest. But I know that Deathwing has a story. But the fact is that in the game, he is a one-dimensional force of na nature boss, which is really cool. However, that's about all I can say. Yeah, that, that's about it. Uh, maybe he doesn't want to talk to you, geez. Well, it's just a it's boring boss. All right, next thing, Ragnaros. I love Ragnaros. Ragnaros, basically, uh, the dwarves dug too deep. And, uh, no, they summoned Ragnaros. I think they summoned Ragnaros. What a mistake that was. That was a... <laughs> that was a fucking mistake, wasn't it? So, uh, I, I like Ragnaros. Like, he's... Again, it's a force... Literally a force of nature. In, in this case, it's a force of nature boss. He's great. And then, like, you fight him again in Firelands. They pull him out. And they kill him. It was really cool, man. It was really, really fucking cool. So, yeah, I'm going to put Ragnaros up here as an A-tier boss. Absolutely. What do y'all think? Do y'all think that's fair? I think that's fair. Let's see the next one. Garona. Uh, Like, it's not, again, it's like not even really a villain. Like, wasn't she just getting mind controlled? Didn't she just get fucking mind controlled? That's what I thought happened. Like, uh, they, like they, they took control of her body and, like, made her kill uh, King Lane? She was, yeah. Like, that's that's not interesting at all to me. Like, that's fucking boring. Not a villain at all. Yeah, like, I would say Garona as, like, an antagonist is, like, a C-level antagonist. It's not really that cool. Now, we also have, you know, I talked about Dio, one of the best villains. What is the Warcraft version of Dio? Fucking Gul'dan. Gul'dan. There are no redeeming qualities about Gul'dan. Gul'dan does not have a pet cat. Gul'dan does not care about anybody. Gul'dan does not even really even care about himself. Gul'dan is just pure fucking evil. That and that's it. That's that's all he is just pure fucking evil. And because of that, I think he's a good he's a good boss. I, I would put Gul'dan all the way up here as an S tier boss. And I would maybe even put him above uh Kill Jaden and Sargeras. It, like it, it maybe up here. Chaos yes, yeah, straight up chaotic evil this is such a good fuck he's he's comically bad yeah he's he's comically fucking bad man he only cares about gaining more power yeah exactly uh he is great man the worst mortal yeah uh goldan is amazing i i, I love goldan uh, i think that ashara is probably more interesting but goldan is definitely uh definitely really fucking cool all right so yeah next one here is hakar Hakar, summoned by the trolls. Again, in retrospect, probably not a good decision. Probably, thinking back on it, maybe they should not have done that. Hakar is, in my opinion, not super interesting. I would put Hakar right next to Alakir. A little bit above Alakir because there's a little bit more story to it, but not that much. Yeah, it, it's not that fucking much. All right, next one is Helia. Helia, number one, Odin did her dirty. Like, of course she's fucking mad. Of course she's fucking mad. O Odin did her dirty. And then on top of that, like at the very end, then finally she goes up against the Primus and the Primus just disenchants her. All this for nothing? But I thought some crazy shit was going to happen with like Helia and there was going to be like more to it. But no, he just says, get the fuck out of here. I'm tired of you. Hell, he is dead. I don't know really if she's dead or not, but she's not around too much. The fight in trial was kind of bonkers. Bro, I, I, I thought Mythic Helia was a good fight. Uh, the thing with Mythic Helia, though, is like Mythic Helia was a good fight if you like scripted fights. Mythic Helia is like a Mythic Helia is like a Final Fantasy 14 fight. It's like a Final Fantasy 14 ultimate. And if you actually think that the ultimates were harder than Mythic Helia, you are fucking crazy. Mythic Helia was ridiculous whenever it came out. Like, absolutely disgustingly hard. So, the fact is that Helia was like, it was, yeah, it was a Final Fantasy uh, ultimate fight. It was super scripted. It was the same pretty much every single time. And it was just really, really hard. So, I'm going to put Helia 
Uh, like maybe right here. Like, yeah, I'm gonna put her right there. Yeah. What? What? What do y'all think? Below white mane? Uh, no, I don't think so. Hell yeah, is more interesting than white mane. White mane's not that interesting. She's just hot. Okay, next one here. They really put Hogger on the list, huh? They really had to hit us up with Hogger. They had to give us Hogger. All right. Look, we're gonna put we'll put Hogger in S tier, okay? Yeah, he's your first. You never forget your first boss, right? Yeah, there you go. Hogger's yeah, Hogger's in S tier. We're gonna go the Terror of Elwyn Forest, okay? Yeah, most memorable boss for, by by far. Uh, to be fair, probably more people have killed Hogger than any of the other ones on this list. So you know, take that for what it's worth. Next one, Kalethos. Kalethos is. I think Kalethos is badass. I've always really liked Kalethos, and I also I even liked them kind of in Shadowlands. I didn't think they. I don't feel like they did them dirty in Shadowlands. It was good. So I would say Kalethos is um, the only thing that, in my opinion, like is he an S tier villain? I feel like Kalethos is an S tier villain. Like really, he is. Like Kalethos is an S tier villain. Like he would be higher, but Arthas literally cucked him. Like he was trying to get with Jaina. And Jaina wanted to talk to Arthas instead. And so that that kind of, you know, kind of keeps him down a list. Used to be S, now he's an F tier. Yeah, like that shit with the Magister's Terrace was weird. You're right about that. Like, I'm just going to pretend like that one didn't happen, okay? That was so fucking dumb. Uh, Cuck, yeah, he's the, he's the Where's Waldo boss? That That's, that's Kel'Thuzad. Well, actually, they're both KT. So yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know how that fucking happened. But all right, next one, Magtheridon. Magtheridon is, look, you have two pit lords, like all the other ones, like fucking Kazrogal, like which one was it, was it Netheron? I forgot, no, that was the Dreadlord, um, like Magtheridon and, uh, Manoroth are the two main pit lords, okay, Asgore, yeah, there you go, and Brutalis, I guess you've got Brutalis too. Manoroth is clearly better than Magtheridon. If, if, if bro, if Illidan had gone up against Magtherid or sorry, against Manoroth, bro, like he would not have been the last boss. He'd have been the first boss of, of BC. Okay, like that would not have happened. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is Manoroth at home. Magtheridon. I mean, like, look, he just he got beat by an elf, man. He got. Well, I guess, like, I mean. The thing is, like, Manoroth got beat by an orc, so, like, is that really that much better? I mean, I can't really say, but, like, I, it's hard to say. Yeah, next to Grona, yeah. Um, I would say, I would put Manoroth as, like, a B villain. I would put Manoroth, I'd put him right, I'd put him right here. Yeah, as a B villain. And now, of course, we have the other pit lord, Magth- or sorry, <laughs> we just did Magtheron. Manoroth, okay? Manoroth, the biggest big dick pit lord there was. He offered the orcs the blood, uh, his blood to basically control them and all kinds of other crazy shit. The father of your, yeah, bro, Manoroth is fucking awesome. Like, I, I think Manoroth is up here with, like, the old gods. He is bad. He's, like, super strong. He's really powerful. He's just awesome, man. Yeah, he's just fucking awesome. So, yeah, obviously you've got that. Now, obviously, as well, we have the Lich King. I think everybody kind of knows. If my dad knows who the Lich King is, okay? The Lich King is, like, the most iconic character of all World of Warcraft. Like, of the entire Warcraft franchise, the Lich King is the most iconic character. And he is one of the coolest stories. Arthas, by the way, did nothing wrong. The, he looks cool. Everything about him was fucking badass, okay? I, I love the Lich King. Uh, you, you know, like, that. that's all there is to it. Yeah, the Lich King is great. So everybody knows who the Lich King is. Next... I can't believe this guy is even on the list. Do you remember that stupid guy uh, that uh, you kill before you kill Gahoon? Does anybody remember him? Mithrax? Yes, yeah, same. Who gives a fuck about Mithrax? All right, next. Nazoth. I think he's a cut below the other ones. 
Like he's a cut below the other one. He definitely is. I don't think he's an A tier. I definitely don't think he's an S tier boss. By a, a villain, I I don't think so. Like he's Walmart Cthulhu. Yeah, that's basically it. It, it just it was so, like the fight is fucking annoying. Uh, everything about everything about Nazoth is fucking annoying. We got to see the full power of an old god unleashed, and the only thing that he could manage to do was take over some zone in Cataclysm. Give me a fucking break. Like, this was supposed to be, like, the fucking, uh, the end of days. And, but yeah, he, and he got one in Pandaria, too. He got the fucking Pandaria one. That, that that area was already fucked up by Garrosh to begin with. We're gonna give Nazoth, I'm gonna put him down here. I feel like Nazoth was, like, not that interesting. Uh, I feel like he's, like, right here. He's, he's a B-tier villain. Not that exciting. Not that cool. Uh, it is what it is, right? Let's see here. The next one, we have, of course, Anixia. Anixia, again, is like, it, it's one of those fucking characters in the lore that is just so iconic. I feel like this is a, yeah, we, I, you, I, we are in agreement here. This is an A tier, I think, right here. I, I would put Anixia as an A tier, high A tier boss. Now the next one, Zul. I actually kind of liked Zul. Yeah, the Prophet Zul, I, I kind of like, yeah. Uh, like, I'm not saying, like, he was great, but I think he's just a solid, like, he fits into the B-tier uh, characters in terms of, like, just a random uh, lore character or something like that. Yeah, Zul is probably somewhere around, uh, he's probably about, like, right here. That That's where I would put Zul. All right, next, we're going to have the big dick, Lee Shin. Lee Shin was an amazing boss fight. The story, like, what's so crazy about Lee Shin is Lee Shin, they invented Lee Shin in one patch. One patch. And then out of fucking nowhere, he enslaved Pandaria. Yeah, like, this guy came out of fucking literally nowhere. And the story for him was so badass that... People still think he should be an S tier, and guess what? I fucking agree. Like, they had to use a nuclear bomb on Lee Shin because he was such a fucking badass. And the version that you get of Lee Shin that you fight against is some, like, weak-ass, pussy, undead version of Lee Shin that's not even remotely close to his full power. So I would say Lee Shin is absolutely an S tier boss. Like, 100 fucking percent. Lee Shin is awesome. One patch, Chad. Yeah, one patch, and he's an S tier. That is crazy. The next one. Who the fuck is this? Who the fuck is this? Oh, the guy from fucking Nomergon. Oh, who cares? Who cares about what the gnomes do? Oh my god. Anytime, like, I, I get a headache anytime I have to think about him. Who gives a shit? Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Like, I'm gonna put this down as a D. Like, I, I, maybe the story is interesting. I'll take your word for it, all right? But to me, I don't really give a shit about him. I don't think he's that interesting, okay? Yeah, he's a bootleg Dr. Robotnik. That's actually so, that's so good. I love that. So true and so real. Tychondrius, another one of the Dreadlords brought back in Legion to fight in the Nighthold. Tychondrius. Uh, I feel like Tychondrius is the second coolest Dreadlord. Where, like, the obvious coolest Dreadlord is 100 fucking percent Malganus. Tychondrius is about right here, I would say. Tychondrius, maybe, eh, yeah, he's below Deathwing, I'd say. But Tychondrius is fucking cool. Yeah, and he was the leader of the Nathrazine before Sargeras. Well, yeah, before they retconned it, and it was actually Denathrius. But yeah, you're right. So the next one here, Yasiraj. He was the one that got removed, and he was the one whose heart that uh, Garrosh controlled. I feel like this, like, he's not even really much of a villain. Like, you don't really interact with him at all. I feel like he shouldn't even be on the list. Yeah, like, he, he shouldn't even really be on the list. Like, he's not really there. Like, he's cool. Like, he's definitely fucking cool. So, that's about all I have to say about him. Like, I feel like he's A-tier, like he's cool. But that's about all I have to say.
Dark Moon Fair. I never watched that video, that Platinum Wild video. I never got into that one. Maybe one day I'll watch it. Oh, Nerzul. Okay. All right. Yeah. I, I don't really have a lot to say about Siraj. Like, he didn't really, there's no point of him in the story. There's not really anything going on. I really liked Nerzul. I was so disappointed that we didn't get more of his story. Because you've got to remember, man, Nerzul was the original Lich King. Like, he died in a dungeon, and he died like a bitch. It wasn't even like a cool fucking badass dungeon fight. He just went down like a bitch. It's embarrassing, man. Goldan's master. Yeah, he's the guy that trained Goldan. I, I think that Nerzul is like a... But, like, I don't think he was really 100% a villain that much. Because that's one of the things, like, with with him, I, my understanding was like, that was the deviation between, like, him... And, um, uh, what's his name? A and Goldan. Is it like Goldan was much more, uh, malicious or malevolent? So, uh, I would still say Nerzul is an, is a, um, is an S tier villain. So, obviously, we have the two other villains that are in the story. Okay? We have Denathrius and we have, uh, the Jailer. The Jailer, in my opinion, is a D list villain. Denathrius, in my opinion, is below Illidan. Denathrius is one of the, be the best villains we've ever had. Like, uh, yeah, uh, Denathrius is S-tier villain. Like, he's right below Illidan. He's better than Ashara. Uh, in my opinion, I think he's way better than Ashara. Why is Denathrius the main villain in Shadowlands? I don't get it. Because people didn't... Uh, I think if Blizzard had known how much people liked Denathrius, they would have done that. But we can't really say. Bobby? Oh, there's a... Uh, you know. I mean, look, dude. Bobby is a... Uh, He's on another list, okay? He's on Jeffrey Epstein's list, not the WoW Villains list. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, this is my list right here of the... Let me see if I can zoom out just a little bit so everybody can see the whole thing as, like, one screen. Yeah, there we go. This right here is my list, my tier list of all of the WoW Villains. Uh, minus, of course, obviously a handful of them. There were some that were not on this list. It was not complete, but I think it's good enough. So yes, this is my list right here. What about a hero chart? If people do that, then they can do that. If people want to do that, they can do it. Right? Archimonde in same tier as Stitches. Yeah, and you know why? Because Archimonde has just as many lines as Stitches. He has just as many voice lines as Stitches does. Think about that. Argus? Argus wasn't really a villain. Like He was like a machine that was used. It's hard to even say. Argus I'd put as like a C tier villain. Yeah, he was really cool. Like Maybe that, that would put him in B. But he's not, like, really that interesting at all. Jailer, not S-tier. Jailer, the Jailer should have been the best villain we've ever had. The Jailer, 100%, should have been the best villain we've ever had. It should have been Denathrius, and then right after him, the fucking Jailer. And, nope, we got Thanos, but we didn't get the voice lines. That's what happened with the fucking Jailer. What a disaster.